Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have another great update for you from the brand Raven. A little bit about them, they were founded back in 2008. They are headquartered out of the US. And they're a micro brand which was originally mostly known for their amazing vintage style homages with modern upgrades, but now have since moved towards more unique and original designs. Of course, still with a classic kind of eye for Americana, um, but definitely more unique unique and kind of on their own terms uh, developing that great design language that the brand has kind of become synonymous with. Now in terms of the type of watch, I consider this a pilot's watch. Some key common characteristics and design language you're looking for a pilot's watch, it's really going to be all about that ultimate balance of legibility and functionality. In terms of this particular model, it's called the Airfield with the gray dial, orange seconds hand, and black hands, and it features a highly legible dial uh, loaded into a premium surface surgical grade stainless steel case uh, that is constructed basically with the durability of a dive watch because it does have a screw down crown and 200 meters of water resistance. Now um, the great thing is that this is really just a, a practical blend of a field and a pilot's watch. You know, the airfield is really ideal uh, in terms of being that companion from the land to the air and down into the sea if needed with that extra water resistance. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right, guys, so, ooh, myth actually, they also sneak peek, uh, full review to come, but um, you know, from Raven, the same brand uh, also makes Finch knives. So for those of you that are into this really classic kind of Americana aesthetic, uh, you know, modern vintage resto mod type of thing, you can get that as well with a very you know. Um, modern aesthetic, I should say modern build quality with a very vintage aesthetic. So very, very cool. Love these knives and really happy to uh, feature them on the channel for you guys here in a few. But back to the main event for today, it's going to be this airfield. So what I really like about the airfield is it's extremely versatile, right? So it, it of course has a 39 millimeter diameter, 40 at the bezel. So you can see there is some overhang there in terms of the bezel. Um, and then it's only 13.4 millimeters thick, uh, which isn't too bad, especially considering they have this great undercut. And uh, they, you can see they have the brushing here and then the high polish. So it almost makes that side feature uh, like kind of an extended bevel. So that looks really, really great. Um, and then the lug to lug is only 48.2 all stainless steel mostly brushed again with some nice polished accents another key feature is going to be this uh, ceramic insert that is actually on the inner side of this bezel you know kind of sandwiched uh, between the crystal and the bezel so that just adds another dimension and it really adds another literally another dimension because you see these layers to it right you see the black and then you see that outer chapter ring that is slightly stepped and raised and then you see the dial itself and then you take a closer look and you can even notice that the uh the printed and uh, loomed dial is actually quite three-dimensional like it's a really thick application on the airfield and you know pretty smart name right it's an air watch and a field watch the airfield makes sense and airfields are something that you really take off from right so I think that's really cool. I also like that, especially with this orange seconds hand and with this particular dial layout, it really calls upon kind of that everyday adventure explorers type of watch when you have it on the steel bracelet. But I will say, uh, once you get it off the bracelet and onto a strap, it really takes on that more pilot or field watch aesthetic a lot easier. Um, I think to my eye, a lot of people are gonna see this and think, oh wow, this is like a really great kind of explorers watch, right? Uh, it looks like something that maybe Tudor uh, would have made back in the day um, or maybe today because it does have really cool uh, ceramic bezel insert right uh, so it, it definitely has been modernized um, it even has a really unique crown check that out it's I've never seen it done like that it's basically kind of lasered out and uh, because of the depth on it it actually turns it into a grip so very, very cool. It has like a blasted finish, uh, you know, contrasting against uh, high polished. And, and again, these this isn't like a brand new watch. 
out of uh, the box. This is one that's been around at different shows. I actually picked it up from a show, uh, a gathering uh, where he was showcasing his, his pieces and I, I ended up taking this one home with me so that I could share it with you guys. Now, getting into some of those details, of course, you're getting that nice sapphire crystal uh, single dome. So there is going to be some distortion at extremely harsh angles, as you can see here. So there's going to be a little bit of visual play when you do have it at harsh angles. And then you can also notice, though, that it does have that anti-reflective coating. I can get the little blue flare there. Um, so that does help it in terms of legibility when you're out in the open. Of course, reflecting off of the studio lights, it's just really not much you can do against that. But uh, I would say out in the real world, it actually renders very clear, especially considering that it's a single dome sapphire, which can be uh, reflective, um, which we've all kind of learned uh, thanks to Hamilton. <laughs> so this is going to go the other way um, in terms of a great field watch. It's one that has great AR coating as well. So getting into, of course, uh, we already addressed this uh, really cool bezel, but the nice thing is if you look, it has this almost kind of Speedmaster-like shape to it, how it's raised and it has that profile and bevel, which I think is really cool. Again, uh, just a lot, let me give it a quick little wipe here. There's just a lot of different little design cues that uh, flow together really, really well to create something very cohesive with a really great theme. The crown is, of course, signed and screwed down. Um, and then, although you can't see it, uh, inside this uh, solid case back is going to be beating away um, the automatic Seiko Instruments NH38, which is a no date movement. So there's not going to be a ghost position, which is great. And I actually have had kind of mixed experiences with the NH38. I find that in a lot of different applications, the crown action when you're hacking it can be quite mushy and inconsistent. Here, it's actually really good. Like when I hack it and I, I'm, I can do it right now, I'm so confident that I can pull it out, hack the time, and when I push it in, it just goes, it acts the way it's supposed to. And I don't know why not every brand can get it right, but I've definitely handled some NH38s in the past where I push it in and it like, the seconds hand does nothing. And then I have to kind of like fidget with it and play with it and kind of get it going. And unfortunately that can kind of kill the wearing experience, right? It's like, why kind of deal with that if you don't have to? So. Um, very nice that they were able to get that working because the NH movements are great. They have great shock resistance. Um, they're really easy to service. And of course, uh, you know, typically uh, they can really be done, um, you know, by, by just anybody kind of, right? Like anybody who uh, knows how to work on automatic movements will be fine because it's just such an intuitive movement, uh, very simple. And, you know, it's all based on architecture that's been around for 20, 30 years. So, you know, very good from that perspective. Now getting into some of these dial details, you get that great matte gray, um, you know, and it does again have the printed indices, but they do have kind of a three dimensional contour to them because there is that extra layer of depth. Um, and then you get uh, that black five minute increment kind of 60 minute chapter ring, which is great. The painted handsets, uh, so you're getting black and orange. So it's really high contrast, which is great. You're getting X1 blue super luminova so this is going to glow blue and it's going to be you know their high grade stuff which is great um 200 meters of water resistance 20 millimeter lugs that are drilled um so that's great uh, although this does come with of course quick release spring bars let's say you wanted to put it on a nato or something like that then you would just run a spring bar through it it'd be very easy um and honestly this has a really great profile for something like a uh you know a fabric uh, textile strap but um oh actually hey i have something like that here which we can pop on later on uh when we start getting into kind of how it wears on the wrist but you can see that this really just has so much character without doing anything really loud or shouty. There's no uh, crazy texturing or over the top themes. This is just a really handsome watch that displays the information really well and uh, I think has a really great flow to it. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this piece on wrist and see how it wears. 
All right, guys, as you can see, on even on my seven and a half inch wrist, this works extremely well. It is bold, it has that wrist presence, although again, it's only 39 millimeters in diameter, and then it's getting, the part that even comes into contact with your wrist will be even smaller. So although if I get it, of course, up close to the camera lens, it's going to have a good bit of lens distortion. I can keep it down low here and tighten the shot in so you guys can get an idea of how these details look on, you know, I think with just a little bit of a more true aspect ratio. So this thing works great, it feels good. You can see now it actually appears probably a little bit small on my wrist versus the way you were looking at it earlier from the other perspective. But I like this tone of gray. It kind of has a, almost like a blue slate uh, appearance to it, so it's gonna flow well there. That orange just pops, and then of course the black there uh, really just adds extra dimension. Uh, when it comes to this bracelet, 20 millimeter lugs, which is great, but you also do get solid three link bracelets with uh, two different half links on there, one on each end, and then it does have a great taper down to 16 millimeters. Uh, everything is solid, it's using screw pin connectors. You're getting this milled locking clasp as well, which is really, really great, so I dig that. Um, I really do enjoy the aesthetic, and uh, it just feels more like kind of an everyday do-it-all you know, gotta watch, right? Go anywhere, do anything. But if you really wanna get in touch with the more field watch or pilot's watch aesthetic, the cool thing is, you know, because it has drilled lugs as well as quick, uh, quick release end links, I can just pop this off and, you know, put on a strap from our friends uh, at Haviston. And uh, this strap actually has a very similar ethos where it is really tying into kind of air, land, and sea, kind of that do-it-all vibe um, because it comes in a couple different colorways. This one, of course, gives it more of an air or a field vibe. But, oh man, check that out. Let me go ahead and move this. Uh, oh, you guys can take a look at this quickly in a little bit better detail. All milled out. Let's let the camera focus on it. There you go. Nicely signed. Boom. Get great bevels. Really nice, quite articulated. And then of course, using screw in pins. So very cool. But now let's take a look at this little guy. So check that out. Now with this strap, it just takes on way more of that kind of outdoor aesthetic, whether it be, hey, as a field watch, I think with the green, um, or you know, with the shape and the rivet here, it definitely gives you some pilot vibes as well, especially with this roller buckle. So we'll go ahead and quickly throw that on wrist, just so you guys can see. How fantastic that, let me give it a quick wipe just because I smudged it up there. And of course I want you guys to get a nice pristine look at this. So check it out. Whew, that looks good. We'll bring it in real, we'll bring it in a, just a bit tighter just to give you guys some better perspective again. Um, and yeah, check that out, it definitely, brings it to life. I like that although the color palette is really not offensive, right? A little pop of orange, some gray with just, you know, tones of blue, and then of course black and steel. Uh, this isn't gonna be some big clowny cartoony watch that's going to really be super loud, but you spice it up with just this beautiful tone of green and it really brings it to life, which I really, really like. So with all that said, what we'll do from here now is get this back on the bracelet, set up for some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit the lights here. Hey, hey, little surprise appearance by that beautiful little Finch knife, check that out. The beautiful crest is also loomed, but check out the loom on this great little field and pilot style watch. It's just fantastic. It's very, very legible. And you can see it's not actually completely pitch black where I'm at. So it's probably not even kind of giving you the full Monty there in terms of the uh, the play. So what I'll do is I'll give it a quick little extra charge. 
so you guys can take a look and you can see even that 60 minute outer ring is done as well as that whole uh, index which is fantastic so i really really like that about this watch but one thing i did want to also do because i always do is I'll work in some low light transition because you're not always gonna be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you might be coming in and out of a building, walking underneath an overhang or you know, walking underneath a tree, sitting underneath a tree, or just spending time in your favorite automobile. So it's nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less and optimal lighting. And you can see this really stays quite legible there is no wash out point where things just uh you can't see right like you can tell what time it is of course you do get the great kind of uh, directional idea because 12 uh 3 6 and 9 are all in those arabics but uh, just the legibility of just looking at that. It's just clear. It's clean. It's crisp. I dig that and then even in of course a little bit of mixed lighting here It's uh, you can see that that brushing is really quite nice That black ceramic has a nice Luster to it quite glossy and I think adds a nice little pop of kind of play without it being flashy. Uh, that's kind of the story of this watch. It does things that for me, again, stand out, but it's not a loud watch. It's not shouting, but it is speaking with a very firm tone. So <laughs> with that said, guys, um, let's go ahead, pop this. And hey, remember, full review coming soon. Um, take a look, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. But guys, closing thoughts on this awesome little airfield uh, on the wrist, really classic proportions, uh, you know, situationally, this can fit in a lot of different situations. Um, so it definitely feels ready for both field and flight, and I think, and beyond. I think this is also just a great little sports watch in general, um, and I'm glad that they created, again, something that has so much breath, that is so versatile. In terms of model variants, this is uh, available in various color and even dial and handset configurations. So it's probably best to check the links um, in terms of availability and options. Um, but in terms of comparable models, you know, I don't think I even mentioned the price. I think I was so excited I skipped right past it, guys. If those, those of you who are waiting for the price, be ready. 550 bucks. That's pretty darn good, right? Like, I'm sure some of you guys were expecting this to be like in the $700 range. Uh, but I think, you know, obviously they save a little bit of money. They're using the Seiko movement. So it's going to have just the three hertz sweep versus a four hertz sweep. But, I mean, you can see it's moving along beautifully. It's mechanical. It does the job. And then you think about something like, you know, uh, uh, Seiko Alpinist is going to be ticking away at the same beat. And it's going to fulfill a similar kind of wear profile in terms of that being that outdoor adventure type of watch. That, that gata, right? That go anywhere, do anything. So... Um, you know, in terms of comparable models, I think most of these kind of everyday adventure type of watches tend to really embrace the Explorer-esque design cues, whereas the airfield really takes a more refreshing approach by, I think, more literally combining uh, field and flight to kind of create a more contemporary aesthetic, right? So they took little design cues um, and little references that you, again, that you would recognize without it feeling like, oh, I've seen this. They they chop this, drop that, and you know, it. this doesn't do that. It does something a lot better. Um, and again, I think that's kind of one of Raven's strengths. They've always been kind of on the tasteful side of homages where they're kind of doing things right. It's never a one-to-one. -one. It's always just little design cues, little thoughtful things that just kind of tickle, uh, you know, your brain uh, every once in a while because you recognize it, but you're not sure where you've seen it before. You just know that you like seeing it again here. Um, so for me, guys, bottom line, this is an awesomely original go anywhere, do anything type of watch with a ton of versatility and charm. So, I mean, and I only showed it on one strap option, guys. Like, imagine this on a bevy of uh, like pretty much all the other straps you own <laughs> because it's 20 millimeter lugs. Another great thing that you always get when you uh, deal with a micro brand that's run by an enthusiast. You, you, you don't 
ever have any of those scratch your head type of design choices like it's always the right stuff and it's always what you would probably do which is cool and i know this watch isn't going to be for everybody but for those of you that can appreciate it you will have a lot to appreciate so uh with all that said let me know if you got what you guys think and uh if you like the video please do hit like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys